Hello everyone and welcome to the trailer breakdown of Microsoft Flight Simulator. This trailer was released at E3 of this year and wow, this looks amazing. I'm a huge, huge advocate for X-Plane 11. However, when it comes to the future of any game, or in this case, a flight simulator, uh, you bet your bottom dollar. I am extremely excited about this. So we're going to go through every single uh, frame of this thing, try to figure out um, if we can pull any more information that I already have gotten here. I have a list of notes. been scouring the internet. A big thanks to the guys over on Avsim that have been uh, going through this thing and trying to figure it out as well. I'm just going to try to compile all this information here. Let's just start off by playing the actual trailer in full time here. Uh, captured in real time 4K, powered by satellite data and Azure AI. This is a huge, huge thing, the Azure AI. We'll talk about that later on. Here's the opening scene as we get into uh, the trailer. Absolutely beautiful. Look at the sky colors. Look at the auto gen. Look at uh, the new Google Earth style uh, technology. We'll talk about that. Here's a diamond. Uh, I believe that's the diamond 62 there. That was, uh, yeah, here's the TBM firing up. Um, and we know it's a TBM uh, 930 actually. Here's the A320 Neo getting pushed back. And the, uh, there it is taking off on a wet runway. Icon A5, uh, Dubai. Wow. I mean, just look at the beautiful images you are seeing here. And it's about time we have a flight simulator that is, uh, you know, up to par with today's technology. This is just incredible. I grew up with Microsoft Flight Simulator. So seeing this was just a mind blowing experience. Um, I never saw this coming. It's been 13 years, but here we are. We're seeing the very first trailer. The teaser, uh, look at the animals. Remember back in the day with FSX when that was uh, released, that trailer actually, uh, we saw the animals and we were all like, oh my God, look, they got animals on the ground. How cool is that? A little shot there of the AI, um, or not AI, but actually possibly multiplayer. We don't know. And there you go, F Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now it's a huge, huge, huge giveaway. I know there's a lot of people saying, hey, you know, maybe this is going to be like Microsoft Flight. Maybe it's going to be, you know, dumbed down. They use the word simulator, and I don't think they would do that if uh, they uh, didn't mean it. In my opinion, that is what we see. So let's let's go scrubbing back through this thing, and let's start off with the opening scene. So I'm going to hit play here a little bit. We will be able to scrub through this, no problem. There we are, powered by satellite data in Azure AI. What is Azure AI? Azure AI is cloud computing. So when you have uh, what I read in a uh, article about this particular title is that they used uh, two petabytes of data to stitch the entire earth together. So satellite data, we have Azure AI. Now think about the amount of file, or the sizes of these files. You need something like Azure AI to actually make this happen. Cloud computing. Now, some people are kind of upset about that because, well, maybe there's going to be a subscription attached to that. We don't know. Uh, here we are at the opening shot. Look at how gorgeous this is. Now, um, there are some ideas floating around that this is possibly Hawaii. I kind of uh, agree with that based on the topography we see here and the valley right there. Uh, but there's a lot of clouds here, so it's hard to say. So let's back up a second here. What did that say before? Before we even saw this, and we saw the Azure AI and powered by satellite data uh, and all this, what did we see before that? We saw this little nugget of information captured in real time 4K. What does that mean? Real time 4K means that this is in simulator footage. You're not seeing CGI, you're not seeing magical graphics. Um, you're not seeing an artist rendition of what they think it might look like, like we saw with Microsoft Flight Simulator X back in the day. This means this is captured in real time uh, in the simulator and 4K resolution. Now, you're seeing a 1080p image. I'm going to hit play here. Um, and that's because I couldn't get a version of this trailer that would be compatible with uh, Adobe Premiere Pro, which I'm using right now. So if you can get your hands on and download a HD 4K version of the trailer and, and go through it, do it. It is absolutely incredible. 
um, you can see so much more detail than what we get today. I do have my little mouse pointer here so I can point things out if we have to. Um, keep that in mind. All right, so let's continue on. As we go to the next scene, here we are. Maybe the French Alps, maybe Alaska. I don't know, but it is uh, regardless a, um, a mountain range that we are seeing here. And uh, look at the beautiful lighting on the sides of this mountain. I'm going to kind of scrub back here. And you're going to notice here at the bottom left corner, we've got a little bit of some uh, uh, stitching, looks like, from the satellite compared to maybe some autogen. I don't know. But that line right there is really harsh, um, and that's interesting. So there's a lot of tells in this trailer that basically say, hey, I'm a simulator. I'm not CGI, you know. So let's continue on through this. Uh, as we fly over this mountain range, you see the snow. It is beautiful. Uh, and sometimes you will see some texture pop-ins too as well. And they speed up right there really fast to go in the next shot. So this is, uh, I don't know how to really pronounce French at all, but this is in France. This is uh, Marcel, Marcel, I don't know. Uh, Côte d'Azur, I don't know if, you, if that's how you say it. Uh, but that's where we're at here. We're looking at our first glimpse of this Google Earth data, like this, this style. Like, you know, if you use Google Earth or... Um, any kind of mapping software that, that, that does the 3D buildings, that's what we're seeing. And we're going to see this later on in the trailer, uh, just how that technology is being used with Autogen to give you a very, very realistic simulator. I mean, look at the clouds up there. Those look great. Uh, the water reflections are amazing. We get you know some of the, um, right along here, the coastline, you can see the coral starting to uh, pop through. And just look at the coloring. Got little little boats down here. Um, I didn't see them moving. If you go back forth here, you'll see they're not moving. They're, they are stationary, but the waves are moving themselves. They are moving. So you can see the wind blowing across those waves. Uh, but the boats themselves, I don't see anybody move, moving at all. No movement there. So we move on, and uh, we'll see the next uh, scene, which uh, is going to bring us to Chicago. This is Chicago, Illinois. You know, home of Miggs Field uh, that was shut down a long time ago. Uh, and uh, this has been a staple of the Microsoft Flight Simulator series for a very long time. So seeing them do sh uh, Chicago justice is pretty cool stuff. You can see the little uh, Ferris wheel and stuff down here on the right. I uh, have some boats sitting out here. Now, one thing that grabs your attention immediately besides the skyline of Chicago is that we can see this new technology they've got for their weather system, and that is showing off the fog that is down here. Now, we, we haven't seen that very often in any kind of uh, flight simulator where you have a realistic fog layer, and this looks like that might be able to, uh, they might be able to pull this one off. I'm, I'm pretty impressed with the clouds as we see it here with the sunset off to the west but look at this i mean you've got you've got a nice fog layer moving in here and uh you know if you're shooting an ils approach into a runway say at o'hare and you've got a a fog layer over on top of it it's going to change the way uh we see that now look at here you've got sun rays blasting through the buildings and you can see them pouring out here onto the water line that is absolutely beautiful and we also can see the wave movement if i rock it back and forth here so there's, there's nice, nice water effects happening here as we move in to the next shot. It speeds up. And here we are greeted with the very first shot of an airplane in the flight simulator. Now, this is a Diamond DA-62 twin-engine airplane. Uh, we don't know where this is at. This is probably, based off of my breakdown of the trailer, I've, I've noticed they've been staying in the same kind of area with some of the shots. So maybe this is in Chicago. We don't know. There's no way to know. But I want you to pay attention to something here. We've got, uh, first of all, a guy standing here. We've got a guy standing on the left-hand side. And they are animated. If I, if I move this forward, you're going to see, hey, there's the movement there. Don't mind the truck in the middle. Just kind of look at that. They are moving around. So we don't know if we're going to have, um, you know, this is, I wouldn't think this is a opening kind of like menu screen where you choose your airplane and then, hey, you're ready to go. Uh, it seems like it's very dynamic. Um, and you'll see this in another shot and we'll talk about that. So as we move along here, you can see some, uh, some really good details here. Uh, you're going to see this on this wing. Whenever these hangar doors are opening, look at the shadow change right there. That is crisp. That is beautiful. PBR 
gorgeous. This is just eye candy right here. Um, and out here, we can see the dollies with the tongues up on them. And we got a truck moving here. Now, if you watch this truck, this is a tell that you're looking at the sim because the AI path actually makes a pretty abrupt change in its turn as he goes here. I mean, it's not bad, but if you go, if you go a little quicker with it, you'll see what I'm talking about. I'll play it in, uh, in real time as he passes by like that. Uh, um, it's, it's pretty believable actually. Uh, I, I kind of noticed it with the 4k stuff. You can see a little bit of a turn there. That was a little abnormal. Look at the, uh, the lighting of the sun, uh, you know, popping right out when those, uh, those hangar doors open. And then when that happens, look at the, I mean, look at the lighting on the windows over here on the right. You're going to see those things just shimmering out like that. It looks so good. Looks so good. So here we are with a TBM 930 starting up. Um, not sure if this is in sim. They're saying it is basically. Um, I've seen some people say that maybe this is some uh, kind of CGI stuff they're using with, to get the bokeh effect, to get the, the blurred background. Um, you know, the, the focal uh, point of, of what we're seeing here. They're trying to show us, you know, hey, look at how beautiful this airplane is because in 4K, it looks amazing. Um, but maybe that is just part of the sim. Maybe that is part of the camera system. Maybe they have uh, those options and they're showing us those. I don't know. We're going to notice on the nose cone here, not a lot of detail being shown on the ground. Uh, we don't know where this is located. But regardless, you will see this. If you look out here on the edges, we're seeing some blur. We're seeing some shimmering happening here. Uh, that shows, hey, we're going to have heat blur coming from the engines. Now, we've seen that in X-Plane, but here we are being shown it, and you can clearly see it as I rock it back and forth. Look at the blur uh, as that engine is firing up on that TBM. That is absolutely beautiful. Here's our first shot of, uh, of some uh, airport ramp activity. This is... Uh, in LA, clearly at LAX, you can see the uh, main uh, the main terminal area here, and uh, look at that, and that's LA. Come on, and you got uh, our first glimpse at the fake airlines. You know, we used to see Orbit Airlines, we used to see um, I forget the other ones, but uh, Orbit does stick out sadly. <laughs> um, but what if they're going to make a, a return? We don't know. Uh, this is an A three twenty Neo. Uh, and this is the new generation uh, of A320. Look at the engines here, the, you know, the sharklets here. Um, and it'll actually say Neo on the side of the airplane. Now, what's interesting is that this one has the uh, house livery on it. And these are just plain white. So placeholders, perhaps. Uh, I want you to pay attention to these little guys here on the ground because we saw these earlier. And maybe, just maybe, that shot we saw um, of the TBM. Maybe it was in LA. We don't know. But these guys out here hanging out, look at this. They are moving. We've got one walking right there. These guys are kind of just hanging out and talking to each other. But uh, there is movement there. Look at that. And we have a pushback truck over here on the left hand side. We got a guy standing here. Now, another thing to note is this isn't uh, any kind of trickery happening here as well. This is in the simulator. How do we know this? Look back here. I've I noticed, I've seen this so many times. There's this little uh, tug coming back here with the baggage cart, and he's driving right through that airplane that's parked there. So that's kind of a simism that we've known, uh, you know, we've seen in the past. And uh, here he is just driving through it. So this is shot in the simulator. Uh, as we move down, look at the detail here on the little, uh, on the little baggage, uh, the dollies with the tongues sticking up. You've got the little uh, the AA, uh, I forget which ones those are. Those are the smaller cans. Uh, and then a belt loader here, you've got, you know, cones, bags, and two guys hanging out right here. And look at this, you got a little truck here, a little maintenance truck, it looks like, with uh, two rotating lights on it. We don't know if those turn on at night or not, have not seen that yet. Uh, there's belt loader up in the air. I've seen belt loaders down, so maybe those are animated. And uh, we're going to have our own kind of GSX, uh, if you will. Here's our first glimpse at the cockpit of the A320neo. Now, um, it looks like it's a total different place as it's getting pushed back. Um, but it's probably at LA somewhere. It kind of looks like the same kind of lighting setup they have going on. And we can see that tongue right there. Look at this. You got a, a good shot of the baggage carts being uh, used here. Not sure what that says right there. I'd have to look in the, um, in the 4K version to, to check that out. But we get to see that. And there's a guy standing over here. Um, and let's bring it back here and, and have a look and see at what we've got. So 
we've got basically um, what a lot of people have noticed is that the uh, font here that we see on uh, in the Airbus is incorrect. Now, there's one company out there that's made an Airbus A320 uh, and has made that mistake, and that is Aerosoft. And there's a lot of speculation whether or not Aerosoft is involved in this project. Me personally, I think there is. I think there's a good, there's a lot of indications that it is. Um, also, remember, you know, every single flight simulator we've ever had from Microsoft Flight Simulator, they don't ship with the most intense uh, airplanes. They're, they're very basic for anybody get, to get into aviation with and to learn and fly. It's, um, it's not study level, as people say. It's not, uh, you know, highly detailed systems. I would never expect that from a baseline sim, regardless of, uh, of who it is. So we can see on the ND, there's not movement happening there, um, but it is in map mode. So if, uh, or plan mode. Um, so if it's in the plan mode, it, we're not going to see a whole lot of movement there anyway. So hard to say. This is early on. You know, they've still got a while until this is finished. Um, but we can see, you know, the, the cockpits look beautiful. Look at the, the you know, the, the shadow lines on there. No jaggies happening there. Uh, it looks really good. I'm, I'm very, very impressed with that shot. Now, down here is a little Easter egg 2019. I'm glad they put that in there uh, in, the, um, in the squawk code. That's cool. I like that a lot. Also, um, you'll also notice the coloring of uh, the textures here in the cockpit. And uh, this is kind of on par with what we've seen from Aerosoft. So uh, there's a lot of tells that this could be an Aerosoft airplane and that they had a lot to do with all of that. We'll see. Uh, moving on here, we've got a shot of the registration. Now, here's where people are saying, hey, this means Aerosoft is, um, you know, part of this. Uh, you got AS MGS 99. Uh, you've got Aerosoft, Microsoft Gaming uh, Studios, possibly. Not sure what the 99 number means, but AS could also mean Aces Studios. Remember, Aces was axed back in the day. Uh, maybe they have revived it. We do not know. Uh, but this is the Neo for sure in the house colors. Look at this. This is default textures. You know, we're looking at a default sim here. And we've got uh, all sorts of scratches on the paint and just details galore. And I think that that's really, really something to uh, to check out. I, I tried to look in here on the 4K version if that APU exhaust had a blur to it. And it looked like it did. Hard to see uh, right there. You see a little static wicks on the end of the elevator. And here's a shot here of a takeoff. I'm not sure where this is located. I tried to figure it out, um, but I'm not sure. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, this could be like a default um, New York taking off of LaGuardia or something. I, I don't know. Um, so I don't want to speculate too much, but look at the uh, cloud layers. We can see multiple cloud layers. You got blue skies up there uh, and then down below it's kind of murky. And I love that. That is so good. Now, some people have said, hey, why does it look like they're landing or taking off on water? They're taking off um, on water. Now, to me, if you have a camera this close to the runway, uh, you're going to get this kind of effect with bump map mapping, number one. But number two, if it just rained, maybe they're showing off that, hey, we're going to have wet runways after the rain comes. That is really cool. Um, here we are getting our first glimpse of the landing light uh, splash off the wing route here onto the engine. And the lighting looks absolutely beautiful here. We can see the beacon light um, right there. And it's red right here. And that red is a reflection of the runway lights. Uh, we can see the detail work on the A320 here. And I've got to say, this is gorgeous. I mean, if this is a default airplane, look at the details. Look at the PBR. Um, just look at that. And you can see all along here, we've got that whole blurring effect happening. Now, you have to kind of pay attention to it right there. You can see it rippling. We've got heat blur confirmed in this. And uh, before that happened, look how crisp that is out there. When this airplane passes by right here, you're going to notice there's the heat blur right there. Look at that. That is amazing looking. I love that. And uh, there is the airplane taking off into the sky. Gorgeous. Now, I tried to look for wing flex here. Couldn't really tell. Um, I know one of the things that a lot of people are trying to figure out with this new sim is what the flight dynamics will be like. This is the thing I will tell you. I'm not going to speculate on any of that because there's no way in hell we're going to get the same thing that we got from 13 years ago. 
I mean, think about it logically. I think a lot of people don't want to, you know, they don't want to realize that they have to let go of the thousands of dollars in add-ons that they have paid for um, for what any SIM uh, they have. And uh, we're looking at new technology here. We're looking at a whole new game engine, new code, new everything. So I have... I have my uh, optimization, my uh, optimization, wrong word to say. I am very optimistic for it uh, because I think they know what we want. I really do. And there's a good shot of the uh, beacon. Now, you'll notice it's not a quick flash in here. I'll hit play or I'll hit play on it. It's a uh, it's a pretty delayed flash. So that kind of shows that it's got the new um, style of LED beacon lights happening there. And I haven't seen the uh, the strobes, the double strobe from Airbus. So. It's small little things like that that uh, really, really shine in this sim, in this trailer from what we can see. Moving on to the next shot, we can see right here we're in San Francisco. We've got uh, the, you can tell it's San Francisco immediately because if you've ever been to the Bay Area or into San Francisco, it's very green water like that. And I'm wondering if it takes that satellite data, you know, and goes, hey, there's, you know, this coloration of water here, let's put our water on top of that to give it the colors that that it has um, and you can see it's kind of like uh, you know on the edges there uh, even more shallow so this is the bay area now if you notice we're flying in an icon a5 cool airplane to use in this trailer uh, because the icon a5 was an airplane that shipped with microsoft flight now a lot of people didn't like flight um, if you were a hardcore simmer uh, you know you you thought it was the next thing after fsx and it clearly was not the case it was still ESP code. It was uh, just a prettier FSX, but it was dumbed down to try to bring in new pilots. Um, it didn't really work because uh, if, if that would have gone to consoles or something, yeah, maybe you could have picked up some people, in my opinion. Uh, but when it comes down to what we see here, uh, we can clearly see the, the, uh, the San Francisco Bay. Oh, we can see some intersections here. I'm not, that's not eBay there, I don't think. Um, but look at that. You got the Bay Bridge right there. This is beautiful. Now, whenever we get a shot of this, we can see the cars down here, and the cars kind of give away that new technology from the satellite data. So say you've ever used Google Earth in the 3D mode. You've seen how um, it can look like little uh, you know, pyramids of pixels that come together to make, these, uh, to make the elevation changes. Now, it's all the way down onto cars. To me, that doesn't bother me. I don't, I don't play these simulators down on the ground looking at everything. When you're up at, in the air, even at 1,000 feet, looking down 500 feet, I mean, that's believable, especially whenever you're at speed. If we watch this in full speed, look at that. I mean, it's, it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, and you'll notice he's got the uh, uh, little shot right there. You can barely, barely, barely see. Uh, no, he doesn't have the flaps down. They're up. No, they, they look like they're down a little bit. Hard to say. But this is San Francisco. You can see the uh, mountain range back, all the way out there. Uh, and I would believe that that's the airport out that way. Um, I could be wrong with that. It could be further away out there. Um, but, I mean, look at that. That is beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Now, one thing I did notice in this shot, you'll notice if you look at the clouds out here, another tell that this is in sim footage is that we've got some artifacting happening on the tops of the clouds. Now, if I go forward and scrub it, you'll see the black there. Go back. And it kind of just follows that whole range of clouds all the way through the shot. So not sure what that is. Our first signs of artifacting. Here is a shot of Dubai. We can see the, uh, uh, the, you know, the, the, the visuals here of a sunset. And it looks beautiful. And they're showing off their new night lighting system. Everybody goes, you know, uh, X-Plane has been known for having beautiful, beautiful lighting when it comes to night flying. And uh, ESP never was really good at it. It never, it never needed to be because X-Plane has come a very, very long way. So regardless, here is the new lighting, and I, I'm very excited for it. I think it looks beautiful. We've seen a lot of third-party add-ons try to uh, pull this off in uh, the ESP-style sims, like P3D and, and FSX, and they can do it to an extent, but this is really showing it off, and I think they want you to see it, especially this down here all being lit up. Now... If you look down here along this, uh, this little section, you'll notice we're not seeing a lot of that Google Earth kind of style uh, with these buildings. These look like kind of like autogen buildings. They look like, uh, you know, pre-placed 3D models. 
and um, in Dubai, if it, they're going to this extent, um, I think it's safe to say that maybe they've done some uh, work on certain uh, airports. We, we don't know that for sure. Uh, as I scrub through here, I've noticed these uh, boats down here are not moving. We can see wakes on them. If they are moving, they're moving extremely slow, but in the shot, it looks like they're static. So not sure if this is um, a boat out here, um, you know, using that satellite data, I've seen it moving, and then they made a 3D model on top of where it was located. Um, or if it's actually moving, we don't we don't really know. And, I, and I, I'm not going to speculate too much more further than that. You'll see out here, um, if you look at uh, satellite data, uh, you know, from from what you can see on the internet and you look at this shot, you'll notice we're seeing some coastlines doing some weird stuff. And uh, that kind of proves that, you know, they, they have an auto gen uh, here in this sim. And uh, we're, we're seeing some of that here. We're not seeing just, uh, you know, a uh, copy paste of, say, a satellite image. So here's our uh, first shot here after Dubai. Now, I think it's uh, somebody said this is Chateau, uh, Chateau Diff, Diff. <laughs> I told you, I'm going to tear these things up. I don't know how to speak French. Uh, basically, off the coast of uh, Marcel, France, uh, Cote or whatever you want to call it. Um, and look at this. We get our first shot of the coral or, or how clear the water is here. But look at the coral. And we're going to see this later on. Now, we're uh, flying along here in a Robin DR400. Very abstract airplane to have in the flight sim. Um, but welcome, of course. We can see the uh, OBS here. We can see, uh, you know, they're tracking in on a, either a VOR or, or whatever. Uh, and uh, we can see a little bit out here. But look at this. There's that registration again, ASMGS14. Uh, we're at 500 feet. And there is the Robin logo right there. So we know we're flying a Robin besides the wing uh, structure there and the, uh, the design of that. So we're looking at this. Now, one thing I, I've seen this shot so many times watching this. Uh, and I and I thought it was originally Alcatraz, and then I I looked online. And I was like, no, that's not Alcatraz. They, they don't they don't match up. So this is a fortress that was turned. I think it was a prison or something at one point, but it is indeed in France where that opening shot is. Um, but look here, as I scrub through, you're not going to see it. You'll miss it if I don't point it out. I'll go back one more time. See if you can if you can grab what I'm looking at here, which is really cool. There it is again. So if I move back. I want you to look out here along the water lines here. You see these are white specks. You're seeing these white specks. These are not uh, graphical anomalies or anything like that. I've checked this in the 4K footage. These are seagulls. These are absolutely like a huge flock of seagulls right there. You can see them right there. You see their wings. Um, and they're just whizzing by down there at those low altitudes. Look how realistic that looks. I mean, that, uh, that animal AI looks so good. So bird strikes, I don't know. You know me, I'm not a YouTuber that's like, hey, I don't know, bird strikes, what do you guys think? No, um, I, I, th I think that's amazing looking uh, regardless. So here's the next shot, and uh, this is right near Area 51 in Nevada. This is the Papoose area, uh, the Papoose Lake. Uh, it's a dry, uh, you know, a dry lake bed. Um, and look at the beautiful uh, shot here. This is just gorgeous. We can see the, the clouds, and I've noticed... Uh, it seems like the clouds do change their coloring, uh, their shading based off of the weather um, that is, uh, is is present. Like you can see the dark colors of, you know, it picking up that moisture. Uh, you can see the white tops on them. And there's there's something here that shows, like even with the 4K footage, that these clouds are absolutely in the sim. They're not, uh, you know, they're not injecting these things in uh, CGI or anything like that. And look at this just riddled here. Uh, these little, uh, they look like craters and it's a bombing range, uh, out in this area. So I'm not sure if that's all from, from that, or if we're looking at the Nevada bombing range, uh, but this is the Papoose, uh, area right here. Moving on from here, we go to the next shot and this shows off. Hey, yes. Remember in FSX a long time ago, we had that beautiful coral. Uh, they're bringing it back. Um, this, these next shots here, they were actually, um, a lot of people figured out where they were from, and they are indeed from uh, possibly from the uh, the Rift Valley area in Kenya. So it's either that or it's, uh, you know, it, it could be near the Nagong Hills in Ken as well in Kenya. Either way, Africa. We have a shot here. Look how beautiful that is. 
That looks absolutely gorgeous. Um, this is going to make flying in the Bahamas a real treat. Now, this shot here, I don't know where this is located at. Uh, this looks like it could be near Salt Lake. Uh, not, uh, that looks like a big, huge salt lake or out there or a uh, dry bed of some sorts. Uh, so this could be in the same area in Nevada. We don't know. But they're just showing off the topography and look at that. I mean, you know, we have ortho for XP. We have ortho uh, scenery uh, for you know, prepared. There is no doubt in my mind that ortho satellite data is how you uh, you have to go in a flight simulator because it just replicates the very area you're simulating. It's insane. So that's awesome to see. Let's keep moving on from this shot. Uh, I'm noticing that blue haze effect that I was kind of, I've seen this in a few shots. I've seen this in this shot and the shot that has Lake Powell in it. Uh, and it looks like it's based off of the, you know, the haze or, or, or whatever's going on that day. Cause we see the next shot here uh, that it's not that bad. It's a really clear day. Um, you can see the shading and the clouds there it looks beautiful. This is the crater. This is the, I think it's the Beringer or Behringer uh, meteor crater in Arizona. Um, and you're seeing down here, look at that. We've got some buildings uh, that look like they're 3D. But remember, if you, especially these little boulders here, they look like they're 3D as well. And they will be because it's picking up that elevation data. That is just absolutely gorgeous. I don't see any cars on that road there. Um, let's go back this way. Now, another thing is this is an airplane uh, that it gives away what airplane it is based off of the wing right here and what structure that is. Uh, this is a Bonanza. It's been nailed down. A lot of people think it's a. it could be anything, an A36, whatever. But it seems like it's an actually a, an, a Bonanza G36. Uh, we see the static wicks there and the paint. Uh, I've actually seen some, uh, some uh, G36s that have that exact paint scheme on them with that airfoil piece there. It, it, this, this is awesome to have a Bonanza again. Um, but uh, look, at the, look at the data there of, of elevation. Like for something as small as the, you know, this crater, it's, it's amazing. Absolutely amazing. So I'm, I'm really, really looking forward to uh, uh, this. Um, I really, really am. Here's the next shot. Not sure where this is located. This could be in Hawaii or something, or um, I, I don't know. I really don't. I tried to pinpoint it myself, and I couldn't figure it out. Um, I think the giveaway is going to be this center uh, taxiway, little uh, right here. I don't know. But here we are looking at a storm front system from hell. This is beautiful. This is what you want to see. If you're flying into a massive thunderstorm, uh, not into it, but near it. This is what you want to see. You want to see something menacing, scary. Oh my, we don't want to bring our GA airplane anywhere near this, or let alone a commercial airliner. But look at the thunderhead here. Look at the anvil cloud popping out to the left there. And uh, you can just see the updrafts happening here. Now, when I say that, we're going to put it in motion. You're going to see what I'm talking about. Uh, these anvil clouds, you're going to see the upward motion, the updraft of them. So here, I'm going to go ahead and rock it through. And you're noticing it is moving. It's moving ever so slightly, but it is moving. If I play it in full time, you'll see it go up there like that. Um, if I scrub it quickly, you're going to see it. I'll show you it if I scrub it through it fast. See that right there? Look at that movement happening right there. I mean, you can see that that whole storm system is alive, especially right up here. You see the updrafts hitting right in this area where the, where the really dark rain is falling. Look at that. If I rock it. You could just, you could see that movement. I got to do it just ever so slightly. Just rock it back and forth and look at them. It's alive. That, that storm system right there is beautiful. So very excited to see the weather system uh, in this new simulator for sure. Let's move on to the next shot. And here we are greeted with the Airbus A320 Neo. We know it's a Neo. It says N-E-O right on the side. So it definitely is a Neo. Um, and he is flying probably into that storm that we saw there or near it. And here we are greeted with our first shot of the lightning. We're going to go through this uh, step by step. Uh, there's the beginning of that lightning. I love how extremely bright the lighting gets. If you've ever been near lightning before and it's really close, it is blinding. So I love seeing that. It gives you that menacing, uh, you know, look. And look at it lighten up this airplane. The PBR just, you know, reflecting it so beautifully. Look at that. And you can see, uh, if I go to this very last shot here, the actual uh, bolt of lightning, that snake lightning, kind of like, you know, horizontal 
style. But if you just do it in real time, you would miss it. It happens so fast. Uh, and here we are in the next shot here. I couldn't figure out where we're located. Uh, even in 4K, I tried to look up here at the uh, navigation and... Uh, sorry, I'm uh, cracking my voice. Man, it's been a long one. <laughs> but I looked at the navigation. I couldn't see anything. Look at the, the rain effects here. This is absolutely amazing. Uh, we've seen, you know, some uh, products in flight simulation get close to this. Uh, and uh, even Flight Sim World had really good uh, rain effects. But I love the beating of the water here being collected on the side. That just looks so, so good. Um, and this kind of puzzles me because sometimes I see uh, a river here like this. And you can see the coast of that river looks very irregular. It looks very natural. But later on, I'm going to show you one that looks very unnatural. Again, we see that AS MGS this time 14. Let's move on to the next shot. I believe this is in the uh, TBM 930. Moving on to this shot. This one uh, took me a while to try to figure it out because this terminal is not lit up and this terminal over here is not lit up. So if you don't know where that's at, you would have a hard time trying to guess where this is located. Uh, this uh, right here, the coastline really puts it in perspective. So we're looking at LAX. We're coming in on 2-4 right here. Um, and the reason why you know it's LAX is because right here in the 4K version, you can't see it here. Um, but as we get closer, all those little spokes are there. The LAX spokes are all right there. So that's what gives, a, it, gives it away. If this terminal here was Southwest and everybody uh, parks was lit up, it would make more sense. Remember, this is in early access, or not, not early access, this is early uh, build. Um, so we're seeing, you know, things that aren't finished yet. So perhaps they haven't built that up yet. And that's why it's not lit up. Now, I love seeing the lighting of all the autogen buildings and all the houses. Uh, it really gives you a realistic look. And, and look at that draw distance out there into the distance. That is beautiful. That really is amazing. I hope, um, you know, we, we continue to see that as they, they preview this game. So the simulator, don't call it a game, right? Uh, one thing we can say immediately uh, with that shot and this shot uh, as well is look at the attention to detail that they put in to the lighting system. Remember back in the day, you would you'd be able to see like a Pappy or a Vassy just 20 miles away. You, these things were beacons in the night. You just you couldn't miss them. And it looks like they're way more subtle now and they blend in to the uh, surrounding scenery, which is incredible to see. I love that. So there's that rabbit. Right there, you can see it lighten up. Look how realistic that looks. That looks so good. And now we see the shot of the Diamond DA-62 coming into land. Now, this is seven right. This took me a while to figure this out. Oh, uh, This is LAX. Um, and in the 4K footage, you can actually, you'll actually see the little spokes out there for LA. Um, here's the international terminal right along there. Uh, there's the two fours over there. And uh, you'll see we've got the mountain range. Uh, and it kind of comes down to that. Uh, downtown LA is right over there. And this is Hawthorne right here. Um, now, what makes it hard to figure out where you're at is this uh, right here. They're showing you that that fog layer that, uh, you know, that we've seen before in Chicago. And it's hiding everything behind it. That is so brilliant. This made me very, very excited to see because it means that you don't see lighting uh, you know, from the ground through those clouds. And that is amazing. That, that really is cool. Now, I don't know why this isn't all lit up over here. This should definitely be lit up unless that they're showing you, you're at the point where you're, you know, coming through a fog layer like in real life uh, and it would block all of that lighting out. So I'm, I'm wondering if that's what we're seeing there. Beautiful PBR here on the side of this airplane. Uh, look at how the sun uh, as it sets or actually this looks like it's coming up in the morning because um, it, it looks like it's coming from the from the east. Uh, and look how it lights up underneath the uh, clouds here. Now, I could be incorrect on that. And you guys can, uh, you know, feel free to say whatever you want in the comments below and, and get a discussion going because I'm just super excited about this. And look at the lighting here. Now, the, the, the Vassies here are not blown out. They're not crazy looking. Uh, they look very natural. They look great. Uh, as we step through it, we can see the rabbit system in motion. Look at that landing gear. Oh, oh man, that next shot. Uh, the landing gear in motion looks very good and realistic. And look at the, uh, the wings bobbling around there a little bit. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Here's a shot, uh, again, near Kenya, the Great Rift Valley in Africa. Uh, we can see the flamingos. If you've watched any of um, 
the uh, of uh, Planet Earth series uh, documentaries and stuff, you'll know this area here <laughs> 100%. But here we are looking at, uh, a lot of people thought it was a Super Cub. I believe it's the Carbon Cub. Some people have said it's a Carbon Cub. I agree with that because look at the cowling. You can see how fat it is. Uh, it looks like a Carbon Cub to me, which is cool. If they worked with Carbon Cub, we're going to have a pretty cool airplane here. And look at the sun glaring on that windscreen. Look at that. That is gorgeous as it makes its turn. And we can see a pilot in there. And I have even noticed in the 4K footage, he's leaning into the turn. How amazing is that shot? And look at the like how shallow that, that water is. That looks so beautiful. You see individual shadows from the flamingos. Look at the flamingos themselves. In 4K, they look incredible. And here we are with the Great Pyramid. Well, the pyramids here in Giza, uh, in Egypt, and we can see that uh, we got some shadowing from the sides of these uh, structures uh, as uh, as the time as it passes on here. As we we turn, you can see them uh, kind of. They're a little dynamic. These seem to be kind of the same thing here, not changing too much. Um, there's not a whole lot of movement here. They're just showing, hey, remember the pyramids back in FSX? Hey, we're back, and they look beautiful as ever. Um, and look at all the dig sites and everything. This just looks absolutely incredible. Uh, here we are in the next shot. Here is the TBM 930 uh, descending into San Francisco. This is the Golden Gate Bridge here. And you can see the turn as it goes into San Francisco downtown. The Bay Bridge out there uh, that would put the uh, airport, or airport out that way. And you can look at that. This is showing off that beautiful fog that we saw in Chicago. This time... In San Francisco, you know, we, we get that marine layer. We get this, uh, this, uh, you know, this nasty fog that moves in. Look at how realistic that is. And you can see the tower sticking out through it. And you don't see anything underneath there. That is amazing. And look at how it just kind of crawls out. Man, this, this is so, so awesome. Uh, Alcatraz out there. Just a beautiful shot here. Um, and look at the lighting right there. That, um, you know, when the sun's coming up in the morning, uh, from the east, and it starts to light up underneath these clouds. Man, that looks just like it does in real life when you're flying. Now, there's something here in this shot that is absolutely awesome, and uh, that is, this is the first time we get to see the flight dynamics. Uh, you may be saying, hey, I don't know what you're talking about, but just keep an eye on it here as I scrub through it slowly. Here's he's turning to the right, and you're going to notice there's a bobble happening there. So it's not the camera, because the camera does stay nice and straight but you're seeing the airplane itself uh hitting a pocket of air there it could be turbulence or something uh and it's moving the airplane around i'm going to play it in uh, full time for you here as i back it up but look at the movement on that airplane there i mean just look at that pretty good stuff now the next shot is again in san francisco we're just uh, we're going from where we're at here and we're flying around this way we're looking over um, out the left wing over here by the Bay Bridge. And uh, you'll see the shot here. Here's uh, downtown San Francisco where the Akon A5 was flying before. And there's the Golden Gate Bridge out there. There's that marine, fo that, that fog layer just creeping across. And look at how uh, diffused it looks. That looks so, so good as we move along to that shot. Uh, you're going to notice um, also the flight dynamics a little bit here as well. We're seeing a little bit of shaking happening here. Right back and forth. You see it. Uh, happening there. It's like hitting a little bit of, uh, you know, that lower turbulence. So the airplane seems very alive. Look at the PBR on that. That's incredible. So here's our next shot here. Uh, I'm not sure what airplane this is. This could be uh, the Diamond 6, uh, the DA-62. Just looking off the right, it, it kind of shows that that might be the case. So what are we looking at here? We're looking at Houston, Texas. Uh, and I think they chose Houston, Texas here to show off something um, that they want to show you. And that is all of your cities are going to look like this. With this technology they have, this satellite data that they're using, and using the Azure AI to cloud compute and bring these massive textures to you and, 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 and streamline all this, they're showing you Houston like, hey, this is going to be any, any of these cities are going to be like that. Now, if you've used uh, Google Earth or any kind of program like that, uh, with the 3D buildings, you're going to notice here, look at along here, we've got these lines that should be pretty much straight up and down. They're kind of wavy. Uh, they should be straight, but they're wavy. And we're seeing that stitching, that kind of like pulling that texture across um, that. And, and you're seeing the same thing happen here with the cars, the parking lot, 
uh, all the way down here, you're seeing it. Um, and look at this. We've got, you know, uh, different uh, billboards. We've got, it, 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 there's so much here to see. Um, and this is where they're showing off their ground traffic. Now, look all the way down here. Look at the lighting, the shadows happening there, uh, the overpass and underpasses there uh, of the highway. And look at the individual shadows off of each vehicle. Now, these vehicles are in motion. You can see it right there as I, as I scrub through it. Now, this is a telltale shot. You're going to see a few things happening here. You're going to see some uh, vehicles crossing the wrong way. Uh, they're driving across the uh, the highway. You see right here, you see that little dip in the, uh, in, in the line there uh, from that satellite stitched image, um, which is okay. I, I, you're not going to notice it when you're up at altitude. Um, but look at here, you got a vehicle crossing all the way. Across, this guy right here, this truck or something, he's just going right on across that highway like, hey, what's up? Uh, another thing is over here on the right, you're going to see all the way out here, um, you're seeing some uh, movement happening here, just insta pop right there, that, that texture pop. Well, it's not really that. It's just I think it's a truck making a left turn and instantly does it. And these guys down here as well, doing some weird stuff going into traffic. So we're seeing the AI traffic behave how you would expect it to behave in a sim. Now, here is the shot of the airplane. The reason why I think this is the Diamond uh, 62 is the shadow proves that point. In 4K, you can see it really well. Um, but even right here, look at this intersection here. You got a truck. Just cruising straight on through, and the, another one going through that guy there. So we're seeing that happen, but that doesn't matter because the motion you're going to see uh, is just such a believable experience. You're not going to care about what their individual AI paths are. Who would care? Um, but look at the the Houston Stadium. It looks beautiful. Uh, I'm I'm very 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 pleased with that. The next shot here. This is uh, the Lake Powell area um, in Arizona. The Colorado River, we can see that. We can see um, Marble Canyon uh, near the Grand Canyon here. Just absolutely beautiful. Look at how washed out and, and blue it is on this day that you're up at this altitude. So that could, you know, be based off of the meteorological conditions at the time. So uh, look at that. Got an airport down here in city. Just look at that. You would not have that without that satellite data. You just wouldn't have something like that. And, and the clouds look, they look beautiful, but out here they look kind of simish, you know. Um, but another great shot there. Uh, moving on, we go to the next shot. Uh, not sure where this is located. This could be in Arizona, could be in Nevada, could be anywhere really. But uh, look, at the, uh, look at the resolution here of the, of the satellite image. That looks amazing. Really good. Look at the clouds in the background. Volumetric clouds. A lot of people are wondering... Are these volumetric 3D clouds? They are, and there's a shot of them showing that off. Now, we see this airplane here uh, making his uh, climb. He's doing a loop in Seattle, Washington. Uh, Murdy Cap 10, this is the, the, C, the Cap airplane, uh, and you can see, uh, just look at the, the autogen here, and it, it just looks so believable at this low altitude. I'm blown away by it. Uh, and as he climbs, you're going to see the uh, PBR uh, they're showing that off, of course. Look at the uh, the the dark spots here. I don't know if that's uh, what that is. It's just dirt or something. Uh, as he he makes that turn. Now look at this or, or the loop. You've got the elevator dumped back. You can just see the the nice details right there. Look at the down here on the left. We've got boats sitting here. Uh, you've got vehicles on the road. Now I don't see anybody moving here. So this could be could have been an earlier shot, honestly. Uh, before we get to the next shot here. Um, look at that. I'm, I'm trying to figure out what the airplane's doing. You can see it. It's, it's kind of, it looks like it's fluid, you know, like it's, it's, it's getting moved around as it's going through that, that, that turn. So here's another shot. We're in Seattle. Of course, they're like, Hey, if you didn't notice this was Seattle, well, now, you know, cause you know, we have the tower here and, uh, look at the, uh, reflection of this, um, right here, this cloud, uh, with that dark spot underneath it, you can see it reflecting really well in the water there. That is really cool. Look at the lighting, uh, lighten up this knob. That is just incredible. And here we go, getting ready for that shot. So now we know there is a dynamic camera system here, like a head movement. You'll, you'll see how it kind of rotates around the head point here as we go into our roll. And as we go into the roll, we're seeing a lot of blurring here. So there will be motion blur, it seems. Uh, if this was taken from in the simulator, which it says it is. Uh, we're going to see some motion blur from that. That's that's pretty pretty cool to see. Um, and here's another shot, a tail shot of the uh, cap 
And there is the uh, tower right there as we go flying by it. Just the, the Space Needle is what it's called. Uh, look at that. We've got a, uh, it's like a soccer field or something there. And you can see the little bit of bending happening with some of these textures, uh, which, you know, shows that Google Earth kind of style 3D, uh, especially right there. You can see it. Um, but the, the, the image you get from it is just so worth it. And look at that. We're seeing the bobbling of the airplane a little bit here. You'll, you'll notice it. Uh, you won't see it unless I put it in full motion here, but watch. It's, it just kind of makes a little bit of a dip there as we go flying around the needle. Here's another shot off the right. You can see right here are some big ones. These are huge tells that we're looking at a sim here. Uh, you've got that Google Earth kind of style building thing happening here. And right here, I don't know what happened to those trees, but man, those things are just, uh, they look like sticks. They look like a bunch of sticks standing up. And these cars are just destroyed uh, in that shot as well. So that is uh, definitely from satellite uh, imagery being stitched together. Uh, and down there, you can actually see this little park here. Uh, but And there's a McDonald's right there, and look how wavy it looks. Uh, but how cool is that, to have a one-to-one -one representation of the towns and, and places you fly over? To me, that's worth it. That is absolutely worth it. Here's the Grand Caravan. Remember, the Caravan was in FSX. It's been in there for a while uh, in, in the flight simulators. And uh, here we are greeted with it. We're flying over um, what seems to be the Nagong, Nyong, I don't know how you say it, uh, hills in Kenya. Because you can see the uh, the peak out there, uh, and look at the trees in this uh, Africa savanna. And look at here, we've got elephants. And in the 4K, you'll actually see them really, really well. If I go in motion here, you'll see it. But they are stepping, they are moving. They they look so fluid. And then I also noticed, what is this? Is this an elephant here? Is this a little hyena or something? I couldn't tell what that was. It was hard to say. But look at the airplane making this turn. Uh, really low to the ground, actually. And I tried to see uh, if there was any kind of dynamic movement there. I couldn't really tell in this shot. But, you know, look at the look at the this, the, the African savanna compared to some of the other shots we've seen. Uh, here's the next shot. Now, I couldn't figure out where this is located. This looks like it might be right near Area 51, kind of where we saw Papoose. Uh, we got uh, Flap Lever here. You can see the detail inside of the Carbon Cub. And look at the uh, the fabric here. You can see the uh, the structure of that wing. That is absolutely gorgeous as we fly underneath it. Now, in this shot, we're seeing the Super Cubs or the, or the Carbon Cubs. They look like Carbon Cubs to me. Um, and wow, is this multiplayer we're seeing here? Because I'm thinking this is showing off the multiplayer aspect of it. Now, you'll notice here on the right, uh, there's what appears to be some sort of roads here. And, and, and I don't know if that's an airport. And here I greeted it. We're, we know we're in a desert somewhere. This is one of my favorite shots because of this back here in the corner. Look at the lighting of the sun hitting the tops of these clouds. You know, this, this looks like a day that these clouds are picking up, you know, all that moisture. Look at the cloud shadows underneath it, the color of the sky, the color of the haze. It looks so realistic. It's unreal. And here's three airplanes, just or four airplanes, I'm sorry, flying along, having a great time. Uh, to me, this just is showcasing the... Uh, multiplayer aspect that they, they're going to have in this airplane or in this game. So Sim, man, you can't say, you can't say game anymore. You got to say Sim. Look at the up here at the top, right? We've got the moon, beautiful, beautiful shot of the moon. And uh, it's not oversized or anything like that. Here we come to this shot. Now this is the uh, carbon cub again. You can, you know, it's a cub. It says cub underneath there. Uh, and I think it's carbon cub. I think it says X. Uh, but as he's making this turn, look at the little shadows from the, uh, from all of the trees on the side of this mountain. Now, as we make this turn, there we are, right there's the shot. Before we saw that beautiful looking river that was irregular shaped uh, and, and, it, and it made sense, right? Well, here, this looks like the old standard like FSX style river where you have like just jagged edges, you know? Uh, maybe they don't have that kind of data. Uh, maybe it's like, you know, in between um, mountain ranges or something and they couldn't, and it wouldn't look very good. So maybe it goes off of Autogen instead. Uh, but regardless, this is a beautiful shot of uh, the barren spot of that uh, mountain there with the trees. Look at the trees here. I mean, just all stacked up here. This looks absolutely great. Yeah, that's an X right there. So X Cub uh, looks like a carbon to me. This shot reminds me of the stuff we saw back in the FSX trailer back in the day. We got the giraffes running around. And uh, again, uh, the Nyong, Nagong uh, Hills in Kenya. This is beautiful. Look at the savanna down there. You can see the trees. 
and these guys are moving pretty, pretty fluidly. Like I, I've, I've seen this so many times. This airplane looked like I was about to hit that, that grass right there. <laughs> uh, so many times. And look at the fluid motion of these animals. That is just absolutely awesome. Uh, when they're walking, that's one thing. But this guy over here, look at his neck. He just like, oh, I'm going to go get some grass down there and just cranks his head over. That looks so good. Um, moving on to the next shot. So this is a pretty big one here. This is a uh, Corcheval, France. Corcheval. I'm not really sure how you say it. Uh, and we all know about this, uh, this impressive airport because it's uphill and it's so flat on top. And this right here is showing us, look at the, the mountainside here. This is not a straight and flat runway. We're looking at curvature. We're looking at, uh, you know, curved runways. We have elevation in these runways now. That's, that's a huge, huge thing for a flight sim. Um, we've seen it in X-Plane, but now we're seeing it uh, here in this new simulator itself. I love the, uh, the uh, mountain range here, how it comes down. Uh, and you can see just, you know, based off of that satellite data where they, they put all the trees at, this is, this is unbelievable. It looks so good. This looks like we're, we're uh, landing in the Cessna Caravan 208. And now we're getting a glimpse that the 208 is probably going to be G1000. So that's what it looks like to me. Moving on to the next shot. I haven't figured this city out yet. I thought it was Chicago at first, but then I saw these buildings and I couldn't figure it out. Um, if you know which one this is, be sure to let me know. Uh, it's the Airbus A320neo um, coming into land. We have a good shot of the uh, flaps on it, the texture work of these, um, which kind of screams Aerosoft to me. And look at the, the heat blur here of the shot. And right here, you're noticing, look at the bobble in the airplane. It's very fluid looking. We can see him uh, dumping that uh, elevator here. So here's the elevator and watch the elevator coming down to a stop and it stops right there. And look, when it stops, the airplane itself compensates for that, uh, that motion and, and, and comes down. It, it starts to dive down. Now you'll see it when I play it in full time, how it just drops down like that. That is amazing to me. That shows, you know, that the flight dynamics aren't going to be on rails. They seem like they're, they're quite fluid and look at the nose hunting left and right, especially with the nose gear here as we go there. Right there, you'll see how it just it it jaunts to the right, to the left. That's uh that's 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 pretty uh, impressive looking. Next shot here is the TBM 930 uh, shooting through the clouds up towards the sun. This is a big shot because it shows that this uh that that the clouds are volumetric. They're dynamic. They're not uh, you know 2D sprites. You're not gonna be pushing through billboards as they say. Uh, this is 3D, and uh, look at that just rolling right through it. This next shot is. I love this this shot right here. You can see the uh, thunderhead right there, uh, the anvil cloud starting to uh, pop up of the updrafts, and look at the shadowing on the backside of the clouds from where the sun's hitting them. That is amazing. This uh, shot here, this is showing off the lighting engine that this uh, that this uh, sim is in or is using, and look at that. It looks real. Like that looks like a real image there. It's something you would see from an air to air shot. That is just beautiful. Uh, and I think they knew that they're like, hey, check this out. Now, this shot is showing these two airplanes really close formation right there. Um, and maybe they're showing, hey, you know what? Fly online with your friends. Uh, we know that the ESP uh, platform has never been really good for uh, even X-Plane. Not very good for formation flight. DCS is where it's at when it comes to, uh, you know, having the a flight model to actually uh, pull off formation flying. Here, these guys are doing a pretty good job of it. So maybe we're going to see that. Uh, style of uh, multiplayer and uh, I don't know where this is located at it's just a beautiful shot um, and there's one of uh, the airplanes turning there and we know they're uh, they're, they're separate because they have different um, registrations ASM GS uh, that one is seven and this one is 14 so he's making his turn off to the side and here's a final shot this is uh, northern Los Angeles we can tell that by this right here this is LAX uh, you can see here uh, San Bernardino and we've got he's, he's headed out here towards the uh, Pacific Ocean but look at where he's at 8,800 feet 97 knots and uh, look at the, the, the lighting on top of the clouds look at the clouds look at how thick those clouds are how realistic this looks I'm super super excited about it um, and look at that I mean just look at even the lighting off of these displays beautiful 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 shot right there and that's Microsoft Flight Simulator, folks. Wow.
Let's uh, let's let's talk a little bit about a few key points here before we wrap things up. Azure AI cloud computing huge. When you have two petabytes of data that you've got to compile, um, you've got to be able to stream that somehow. And to me, I would pay a subscription service um, for that. Uh, and, and maybe they're not going to do it that way. I don't know. Maybe it's going to be part of the sim. Um, but I would because I love ortho. And after going ortho with X-Plane 11 for as long as I have, this uh, I, I couldn't go back to it. So this is, is such a huge, huge thing. So Azure AI Cloud Computing, huge. Uh, the Xbox Pass versus the PC release. So this was announced at E3. It's a, it made sense to me. It was a no-brainer. It's a much, much larger audience than what Expo would give you. Um, and uh, this is a big deal. So they put this out here. They threw the Xbox logo up there. We know the Xbox store is already on Windows 10. So uh, it's coming out for PC. They've, they said that in the very beginning. They said Microsoft Flight Simulator is going to come out for PC later for an Xbox release. So what does that mean? Well, we don't really know. Um, Xbox Pass... We know that you have to pay a subscription service for that. And maybe that's how they're going to, uh, you know, put in the whole uh, cloud computing costs or whatever. Um, apart from that, we know this is coming out on PC and then later it's coming out for console. So console gaming is a huge, huge, huge platform for younger audiences to get more pilots involved in the future of aviation. You know, how are you going to inspire a young child? Um, you're going to do it through this. And if they can't afford a huge PC for a nice desktop simulation, you're going to get uh, a console experience. And uh, to be able to pull off a flight sim on console, uh, I think is huge. That's massive for um, the flight sim community and for aviation as a whole. I remember back in the day watching TWA 727s land uh, in a parking lot next to Lambert. And my dad would take me up there. And that's what made me fall in love with airplanes. So today's security standards don't really let you do things like that. How, how do we inspire young pilots? Well, this is how you do it. You bring it to consoles um, and you make it happen. You really do. But you don't leave out uh, the big, huge sim market that is so hardcore. And I think Microsoft knows that. I think Microsoft today is a total different company than it was uh, back in 2007. Um, and they're way more in tune. I think that's why they haven't rushed something out. I think that uh, that's why we saw Flight Sim World fizzle out. Uh, I think they maybe they heard, hey, you know what? There's something huge on the horizon. What's the point? So here we are. We don't know. This is the the first uh, trailer they've released. Uh, the second one is going to give us even more information. Uh, go to the website. I'll link it in the description below to their website. Read about what they're talking about um, because they have answered a lot of questions already about it being on PC, about listening to the flight sim community. Um, talking about how the, the, the trailer itself was in-game footage. Uh, it's all right there, folks. So that's a big one. Uh, Microsoft said they were going to move their games to the Steam platform, so this could be on Steam as well. To me, if we're talking about this coming out at a later date for consoles, it would be a perfect timing for the new Microsoft Scarlet project, um, and you'd have a next-gen console that could pull this off. So I don't know. Any further from that, I hope uh, you enjoyed this breakdown of the trailer. I'm super excited about it. I know I'm an X-Plane guy, but man, I grew up with Microsoft Flight Simulator, and I really want to see this thing succeed. Thank you guys so much, and I'll talk to you very soon. Take care.